Guild Wars 2 was released in 2012. It's a tab target hybrid action MMORPG with an immensely in-depth world, cool unique mounts, raids, PvP, 100 vs 100 battles of epic proportions with a heavy emphasis on completionism and exploration which maintains quite a massive amount of popularity despite its growing age. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a fan of older MMORPGs, I mean I've spent the last year and a half playing a combination of old school RuneScape as well as RuneScape 3, two versions of a 20 year old clicker game. Classic WoW was one of my favorite all time games and I started playing MMOs when I was 4, playing EverQuest, but not really, just kinda smashing the keyboard. But one MMO that I've never tried and constantly hear about and is paraded as this amazing game is Guild Wars 2, and I wanted to find out just how good Guild Wars 2 really is. Will I get hopelessly addicted? Well, I hope so. Let's jump into it. So there are five unique playable races. They say hindsight is 2020, and looking back, I don't know why I picked a race that resembles a cat. I've seen YouTube comments in my time on this platform. This was ultimately a terrible decision, but I just thought the char looked cool. Get it out now, call me a furry, maybe there's some deep-seated trauma that I need to deal with, but anyway, despite that fact, I chose to be a char, and I chose to be the ranger class. Since I was pretty young and playing MMOs, I've always been attracted to a hunter or a range class that has a pet. Especially when I'm just learning a new game, it can usually guarantee a bit of an easier time. Now, Guild Wars deals with classes in a much more unique fashion than a lot of your other standard MMOs, with some completely brand new ideas that I've never even heard of. Take the Mesmer class, or profession as they call it, for example, they use magic to produce illusions and clones of themselves to confuse and damage their enemies. Later on down the road, once you've gotten your character to level 80, you can kind of unlock expansions to your original profession. These are known as unique specializations. So for me, as a ranger, later on I can choose to be a druid, a soul beast, or an untamed. Each of those have their own specific weapon proficiency and a class of skills or abilities that it's going to utilize. I jumped into the world of Tyria, a fresh, furry-faced char ranger with no idea how this world worked. A lot of this information that I'm telling you now as somebody who's put a hundred hours into the game, but when I first started playing I chose to go in completely blind, doing next to no research and just went with whatever decision I wanted to choose because I think when you're first experiencing a game, if you look up too much information it can take a lot of the wonder and the fun out of it and really ruin a bit of your immersion. However, if you're the type of player that wants to min-max everything from the get-go, then be my guest. I immediately noticed in the top right corner of my game a constant tracker telling you what to work on next, whether that be story-driven quests available to you or just the next point of interest in whatever zone you might be in. At first I found this helpful, but as time went on I found it amazing. I found during my leveling process I never really had to stop and think too much about what I wanted to do next. You see, at every 10 levels you unlock a new part of the base game story quest that progresses you through your character's story. Which by the way, the story is unique to all of the different races, but even deeper than that is unique to specific lore questions that are presented to you at the beginning of the game as well as throughout the storyline. It's super cool because everybody kind of gets to mold their own unique storyline depending on what they choose. But the best part about this little activity tracker is that it really allowed me to just mindlessly explore and pave my path through every single zone while feeling productive but at the same time stopping to gather, participating in a challenge event with a few other players, or finding some secret area or treasure. It was a really refreshing experience and I'm gonna say this, and some MMO players might not necessarily be looking for this in their game, but honestly it was relaxing. It felt like a good and productive way to spend my time exploring this world but also getting a sense of accomplishment in a way that didn't require me to think too much about where to go next. Now I talked a little bit about min-maxing from the get-go but let's get into that. I don't think Guild Wars is meant to be min-maxed to the extent that other MMOs are. This game puts heavy emphasis on horizontal progression, but what does that really mean? Well, every MMO says that you can do absolutely whatever you want, whenever you want. And don't get me wrong, there are naked Draenei at this very moment dancing their life away in Goldshire. But for the majority of regular players, doing whatever you want in game means, well, raiding or dungeons or farming out cosmetics. And while all of that plays a massive part in Guild Wars, there's also a heavy emphasis on crafting and world exploration and completionism that doesn't feel quite as rewarding or worth your while in a lot of other MMOs. This is because ArenaNet, the developers of Guild Wars 2, have always developed the game with the mindset that it's important to keep all existing content relevant. No matter what zone I was in while leveling, whether the zone is meant for levels 1 through 10 or level 75 and higher, there were people milling around, exploring the map, completing 
fighting world bosses and events, doing achievements, gathering low-level materials, or acquiring collection-specific items. ArenaNet has just done a great job of not allowing a certain level of power creep to force everyone to stay in the same high-level zones. Honestly, it's a breath of fresh air, and I don't think I can name a single other MMO that does this as well as Guild Wars 2. And during my time playing Guild Wars, I had an irresistible drive and urge to constantly find every new area and explore every piece of content in each zone that I entered. Because not only was it good experience while leveling, but it also worked towards zone and map completion in a way that was interesting and fun. For example, one such moment in the zone Dredge Haunt Falls, I was directed to an area of the map that I couldn't possibly access. After some quick research online, I found out that I had to speak to a certain NPC who was located not too far away. The NPC then had me follow him and defend him as he took me towards this locked dwarven door, frozen over an icy lake. After spending about an hour failing over and over in this stupid area filled with stupid mobs, in completely pitch black darkness, picking up over 50 torches while this damn NPC couldn't even pick up one and help, and falling time and time again in this stupid fucking piece of shit jumping puzzle. Fuck off. It all culminated in an epic boss fight that granted me access to a completely new part of the map, a good chunk of XP as well as some decent loot. That was a truly unique experience that happened to me while leveling, and from that moment forward, I wanted to check out every crevice and area possible, because with Guild Wars 2 you never really know what might just be around the next corner. All in all, the leveling experience as a whole was very quick. I reached level 80 with about 35 hours of playtime, and keep in mind this is as a brand new player who is reading a lot of the quests and exploring the world. As I mentioned earlier, I'm a fan of older MMORPGs, so I don't mind having to grind in order to get to the max level in a video game, so this leveling was fairly quick for me. I had one moment where I was level 51, and due to completing the Adventure Guide, Volume 2, it gave me enough experience from that achievement to go all the way to level 57. That felt like it was a little bit much, in a way, just randomly flying through 6 levels made all of my other leveling feel a little bit less weighty, almost a little bit more pointless. I understand getting to the max level means something different for other MMOs that might be considered the beginning of Endgame, but in Guild Wars 2 it's more of a stepping block to getting towards Endgame. But overall, I thoroughly enjoyed my experience leveling through the world and exploring many of the new zones as well as completing my character specific story quests. If I might offer one single complaint about my time leveling however, it's that during the process my gear looked mostly the same. Slight changes here and there, but honestly my character at level 1 and my character at fresh level 80 despite drastic stat differences, looked relatively similar. I think it's important for you to not only feel, but to also look stronger as you level through an MMO or even just a single player RPG, because I mean, why are we playing these games? Well, we fell in love with loot and gear and weapons and rarity, so I always think it's extremely important for an MMO to capitalize on these types of things. However, your mileage may vary. Maybe my Char Ranger has especially lackluster leveling gear or any of the other many different reasons that might have given me that experience, but it would be negligent of me to not mention it. Upon reaching level 80, I was pretty overwhelmed. I unlocked a lot of new content. First of all, I had to decide what specialization I was going to choose first. I ended up going with the Soul Beast as a kind of hybrid dagger ranger. Sounded kind of cool to me. I really didn't do any research into this. I just looked at the different talents that I could specialize into, and they seemed to be really interesting. Of course, afterwards, I finished the base game story quest, which was fantastic. By the way, the ending was positively epic but I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't potentially tried it out. But the world was my oyster. The problem is that the oyster had no directions, and I felt quite lost. My initial thought was, well, I better join a guild. This is Guild Wars, after all. Plus, I figured it would be a nice place to be able to direct some of my conversation to other people, pick up on what they're doing, and hopefully potentially join in on some group content. Which, until this point in the game, I basically had not experienced anything like your typical dungeon or raid that you might find in other MMOs. It's mostly just been overworld events and bosses that I've done with other players. So I did what any sane person would do, and I asked in world chat, in Lion's Arch, how do you join a guild? And then something amazing happened. I still can't believe this, but somebody in world chat recognized me from my RuneScape content in Guild Wars 2. It was an extremely cool moment, and honestly, I don't know if my ego has ever been at a higher point. My head is bigger than Zaitan's right now. I felt on top of the world. Anyway, this guy ended up generously inviting me to a guild um, that's pretty new player friendly, but also doing basically all the content in the game, so I was able to ask any questions that I needed. On top of that, he also sent me a little bit of gold so that I was actually able to buy myself some exotic gear uh, from the trading post. So super nice individual. Now, one of the main pieces of advice that I received from guildmates was that I should 
should focus on getting other mounts to help me with the navigation around the game, as that just makes completing all the other content a little bit easier. You see, Guild Wars has a really unique take on mounts. Many different mounts have different abilities for navigation and even for combat. For example, the Raptor that I've been riding on mainly has a nice jump and glide. This raptor is actually from the Path of Fire expansion, but you get to trial it early on at level 10, and if you purchase the expansion, you get to keep the mount from an early level. Safe to say, I didn't need much more convincing than that. Fast forward, however, and people are telling me that I should look into getting the Springer mount, as it has a super high vertical, which can help you get to certain points of interest a lot easier. And as so much of Guild Wars is map exploration, this is actually quite an important upgrade for your account. A surprising fact that not many people actually know is Guild Wars flying mounts offered the same type of flying as World of Warcraft. Crafts Dragonflight, but about five years prior. Now, Guild Wars 2 is a free-to-play game, and you get access to an absolutely absurd amount of content without paying a single cent. However, there are four expansions, and one just came out quite recently. The first two you can purchase as a bundle for about 30 bucks, and the other two more recent ones are $30 each. I personally purchased Path of Fire and Heart of Thorns as the first two because they follow the story chronologically. They came together in a bundle and also gave me access to a ton of content post-80 that I could participate in including getting myself a new mount. Check it out, one of the mods from my Discord sent me this new poster. It's Titus from Final Fantasy X, which is one of my favorite games of all time. So Something to spruce up the background, but anyway, I'm currently working towards unlocking my first new mount within this Path of Fire expansion. Essentially, I need to jump over this cliff, um, but the Raptor mount in its original form can't actually make that jump, it's too far. You see, using the mastery system, there's an actual mastery for Path of Fire, and it has all of these different mounts, and you can basically upgrade all of the mounts through mastery points. One of the upgrades allows you to make the Raptor jump a little bit farther. And just beyond this crevice is going to be how we unlock the Springer mount. So let's see. Boom. We made it! Sweet. Alright, looks like it's going to cost 50 trade contracts and 1 gold, but totally worth it. We got ourselves our first new mount. I now have a Springer, and it looks like I can continue with the story quest, because a lot of the places I need to go are pretty high up, and being able to jump like this is going to help immensely. This leads me into my next point, and this is so important. Guild Wars 2 is single-handedly, at least in my opinion, the most alt-friendly game I have ever played. Here are just some of the things that are shared between characters. All currency. All my money is all my money on every character. Mounts. Now that I have the Springer mount, all of my future characters will also have that mount. My bank is a shared bank across my characters. Any specific items or gear or equipment that is not soul bound can be shared between characters. It's actually almost easier to list the things that are not shared between characters. Even if you for some reason deleted all of your characters, your currency and bank would remain the same until you created a new character. This is something I just haven't seen any other MMO truly utilize as well as Guild Wars 2. On top of that, when I purchased the expansion bundle, I got a free level 80 boost. I could have used it on my first character, but I really wanted to experience the game and the leveling process and learn how everything worked before I boosted a second character. I ended up choosing to boost a Nord Guardian because I wanted to try a more melee-centric class, which wore a different type of armor. Now, let's talk a bit more about the monetization of Guild Wars. As monetization has always been a bit of a sticking point for me with games, I recently quit RuneScape 3 after playing over a year and a half because of its recent Hero Pass Battle Pass system. On top of eight other forms of microtransactional pay-to-win content, it was officially too much for me. Guild Wars 2 is more of a mixed bag of monetization. So far, none of it has offended me. However, it seems to be targeted at longer-term players outside of the expansions, that is. First of all, one thing needs to be stated. The cash shop works with a currency called gems that are actually purchasable with in-game gold using the currency exchange. At the time of recording, it's about 150 gold per 400 gems. I actually saw an instant level 80 ticket that cost around 1,600 gems. So essentially 600 gold for a fresh character to level 80. I don't think the boosts in Guild Wars 2 are as egregious as other MMOs. As I explained earlier, the leveling process is so fast anyways that this would almost be like a bit of a waste in my opinion. The expansions are totally fair and reasonably priced, especially considering that this game does not require a subscription fee. I'm also totally fine with all of the cosmetic things that are sold in the shop because once again it's free to play game and cosmetics, while there is an argument to be made that they devalue current achievable appearances, this is something I generally don't have too big of an issue with. Instead, what ArenaNet likes to do in terms of their microtransactions is create an inconvenience and sell you the solution. 
We see this in the form of storage space, inventory, bank tabs. Bank space and inventory is especially pretty small when you start the game, and as you play through more content, you can fill it up pretty quickly. But I say all this as somebody who really dislikes the direction of monetization in gaming. Guild Wars 2 has not offended me, seriously. I know the shop is there, I can purchase some extra things if I need, but so far in my 100 hours of gameplay, the only thing I've really purchased is the expansion bundle. And I'm already thinking about getting the next two expansions. Speaking of expansions, without revealing too much, the Path of Fire expansion is nothing short of beautiful. The main game and the main quest line were fantastic, of course, but the increase in the quality of visuals, to storyline, to combat, to mounts, when I was beginning the Path of Fire quest and entering that part of the map, they absolutely blew me away. I still have yet to jump into the Heart of Thorns expansion since I'm still working on completing Path of Fire. But if this is the type of quality and content that I can expect from every expansion, well, I guess I'm in for a really great time with Guild Wars 2. At the beginning of this video, I said that I hope that I become hopelessly addicted, and I can say with complete confidence that I am indeed hopelessly addicted. My favorite parts about Guild Wars include the focus on completionism, achievements, and map exploration. The alt friendliness that Guild Wars just does so well. The horizontal progression system. And the people. Everyone I have met and interacted with has been pretty happy to help out a new player coming to their decade old MMO. Some parts that I think could use some work. The graphics are slightly dated at this point, however that doesn't take anything away from the game and through stylistic and unique artistic choices, they've done a good job of making this a non-issue. I said before, monetization isn't too bad compared to other MMOs, however selling solutions to made up problems is always going to be a pain point for myself and many players. And finally, I think the game could do a slightly better job at introducing the player to group content. As other than the events throughout the world, I had no real incentive to go find groups to do dungeons or raids, though I am pretty interested in doing that moving forward. All in all, as a new player coming to Guild Wars 2, I highly recommend trying out this game even in the year 2023. If you're looking for a different kind of MMO to sink your teeth in and dedicate hours exploring and collecting, this is the game for you. If you guys want to see me delve deeper and play more Guild Wars 2, please let me know. I'm having an absolute blast. Also, let me know what other MMOs you would like to see me try in the future. You know, you only get to try a new MMO once. You only get to be a new player once, and there's plenty of games that I haven't tried. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. It helps me a bunch. And if you really enjoyed the video, there is a link to my Patreon down in the description. But I will catch you guys in the next one. Later.